Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my illustrious family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with walls. I'm your host, Khadija, your minister of soul. I want to talk about the incident that happened, and I couldn't do anything about it right away. I couldn't make a comment because this situation uh, trauma re-traumatized me. Um, I can't. I didn't even know it would or could, and that's how I know those kids that watch their mother get shot down is going to have a pretty rough time of it. You know, it's 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 just a never-ending cycle. I hear white folk talking about, oh, black people are so violent. They're so violent. We, who have been the receivers of so much violence, perpetrated on us by you. It's no wonder. It's no wonder that some of us ain't going to be right until the game of retribution is, into the, the sake, into a sake of, of, for the sake of rec retribution y'all be dealt with okay I don't need nobody saying well all white people because we already know that just like we know all black people ain't crazy right but what we do know um, in most cases is extremely disturbing and I'm talking about no none other than Susan Susan Lorenz um, and the shooting of AJ, mm -mm. like I said, this traumatized me in a lot of ways simply because, um, and I, I did a video about this a little while ago. When we were children, we were um, like, first, and I hate to say it, you know, but the first pretty much black people that lived on um, our block. Shit. And uh, a mile either way, north or south. The only black person that lived with us, around us, was Sylvia. I talk about her all the time as being my godmother. and I, Sylvia was the lady that had her son shot by MPD. And I mean her brother who came up from Louisiana and the, it was a big famous uh, case. He planted a gun, a knife in um, uh, her, her brother's hand. And it took 30 years or so for the case, to, for him to be exonerated, not exonerated, for him to be charged with murder. Let me slow this thing down. I'm so upset about the other story. I'm just, I, I got to calm down. Um, so what happened was 30 years later, the guy's partner told on him because his conscious, see, you know, your conscious bother you if you got one and it will reprobate your mind. It will torment you until you make peace with the universe because the universe ain't, is, is, is not forgiven. It's not racist. See, that's man's. Uh, problem and creation so this guy told on his partner he said look I can't take no more 30 years ago we planted a knife my partner did and I swore to secrecy but Daniel Bell did not lunge a knife at us we shot him okay and it's just that simple well Sylvia lived and in between us we had a white woman named Marion. Sylvia lived in the in the back of me. So which would make my neighbor Marion. I'm gonna mention her name. She dead and gone now. She wasn't uh directly next door to Sylvia. She was directly next door to us. And we used to play ball in the yard, and she would always make these racial slurs about how y'all, why y'all here, and, you know, she had one son, and he never would come by and visit her. Maybe once in a blue moon, his name was Charles. 
Oh, I'm giving y'all some acknowledgement from hell today. He was terrible because he never came and visited his mother. She was in a big three-bedroom house by herself. She was a racist because every time our toys, our balls would go over in her yard, she would take them, take our bats, take our kickballs, take, and then go, you're not gay, lady, you niggers. God. And so the reason why, I'm going to tell you how young we was because we never heard that before, and so we were calling each other that. We were calling each other the names that Marion was calling us until uh, my one of my brothers said it to me, and my mother heard him. She said, what did you say? And he said, I called her a nigger. And my mother, it was just like in the movies, wait till your father gets home. <laughs> what? Where you get that from? We got it from Marion. She got our balls because for some reason we didn't really bother our mother with that type of shit. Either we knew that she was off the chain and don't need to be messed with, or we'd rather wait till our father come home because he seemed to be more reserved. But he would stick you. He would he would make you leave. So when so my mother made us come in the house. She was like, "Where your baseball?" And and um. Marion got it. Where's your brother? Marion got it. Everything we told her, Marion had it. The white bitch next door. I'm sorry, but I got to say it. She took everything and called us all kinds of freaking names. We were children. We were like, I was, couldn't have been no more than four. My brothers are, you know, two, three, four years older than me. So we're all out here playing. So when my father came home, I remember my brother, oldest brother, telling him what happened. And he had this look on his face, and his face turned red, and he was like, oh. <laughs> so he put his pail down and stuff and turned around, and we went next door. And he banged on Marion's door. I just think, think if she would have shot my dad. That's why I know those kids, they never going to be the same. They, oh, my God. And, and, and more than anything, she should be charged with that alone. That alone is first degree. I, I'm I'm serious. She traumatized the woman kid. She could have shot the attempted murder for the children. She didn't know where that bullet was gonna go. The woman showed up with her kids. Uh Susan. A old fool. That's why a lot of these young people say age don't mean nothing. And you know, there's nothing. But it does mean something. Because no sane and rational person, I want you to hear me. No sane and rational, mature person full of wisdom will respond that way. You have to be full of hatred, like that lady Marion. Anyway, my father went and banged on her door, and next thing I know, she was throwing all that stuff that she had. She had stuff we forgot we threw over there. Our jackets. I mean, everything. And so whatever he said to her, she knocked it off. I'm talking about the 60s, y'all. I'm talking about the 60s. So when I think about these children, to have to bear witness to this witch killing their mother. All I can say is this is going this is the hate that hate produces. Y'all done produce so much hate on us. Don't be surprised when it come back to you. You're the authors of it. You're the authors of it. I want you to pull me up any story where a black woman killed a white mom. Because she came and knocked on her door. Or a black person killed a white person because they knocked on their door. Usually when you go to knock on somebody's door, they mean, let's talk. 
let's let's have a conversation. She old enough to know better. And if she did feel threatened, she should have called the police. And tell her somebody was breaking in my house. And tell the person outside the door, listen, I'm called the police because I don't want you here at my door. And when they arrive, we'll have the conversation. Anybody that's sane and rational got enough sense to say something like that. This lady's charges have to be upgraded to at least second degree. Not no fucking manslaughter. I, I, I just don't. I don't think that's appropriate at all. She needs to be charged with child abuse. There you go. First degree child abuse. to make For making them children bear witness to her killing their mama. First degree. The laws of the universe will apply if the people get out the way. And in this case, not only do the laws of the universe work their magic, the judicial system in this case have to do the same. This woman can't be granted bail. This woman is a cold-blooded murderer. She's a hater. And she's like Marion. She's like Marion. Marion, when she got older, up in age, she was 90s. Walking over to our house, on a, I, live on a, I lived on a hill. And she would walk up and down it's falling in the ice and everything to come over to our house to tell us the noise, the noise. And could we come over and listen to the noise? And my mom would always make us go back and take her home. Because she'd walk her ass over there and couldn't get back home. Because she it was already cold. It took her an hour. Sometimes we'd look out the window and see her. We'd be like, how long has she been out there? She's struggling to get up the steps. And it's a blizzard. Can you please come to my house and hear the noise, please? Man. And we always took her back home, too. We never beat her up. But later on, you know, things be happening. That's a different story. I mean, we won't go there. But at the end of the day, my prayers go out to those children. Uh, I know what's going on in Florida. And it doesn't matter. I know what has to be done. The appropriate charges got to be implemented in Susan's case. Otherwise, we, you know, we see what's going on. We see. I guess you see now, Charles, that they really are trying to put us back into Jim Crow. Huh. You say, how can they do that? This, the courts have been stacked. More and more, we our lives mean less. It already means less to us. So how we expect anybody else? But that's a whole different story too. My heart go out to those kids. And I feel their pain. As many of us do this morning. May God bless them, and we have to do everything we can to protect those children. I don't know if it's a GoFundMe or anything started for her, but uh, those kids, those kids, y'all, that's all I got to say. With that being said, if you like what you hear, please subscribe and share the channel. I'll see you in the next video.